what is up ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me back for another episode at blended graphics and today we're going to do yet another sports poster composition and today it's going to be all about Giannis himself so without further ado let's just jump right into it and let's get started all right here we are let's get started we're going to turn our first subject on and we're going to do the quick selection tool here and go to select subject we're going to zoom in here just to make sure that everything is selected that we want and uh, everything looks pretty good here so we're going to go down to the layer mask option click that and we're going to scale him up he's going to be our largest subject and we're just going to put him in the background for right now so hit enter we'll turn our next person on and we're going to repeat the same process quick selection tool go to select subject and we can remove the unwanted spots that we don't by pressing alter option and then uh, we're going to zoom in on our main subject here just a second just to make sure that we've got everything that we need and once again kind of refining that selection as needed all right so i'm just gonna do a little bit of tidying up down here everything's looking pretty good and um let's hit that layer mask i'm gonna go ahead and just click on the layer mask itself go to a hard round brush tip and we can quickly remove the unwanted area that didn't quite make it into our selection. All right, so our third and final subject here, we're gonna do the same thing again. So, uh, sorry, select subject, zoom in just to make sure that we got everything that we need. And then once we are happy with that, we're gonna click the layer mask option. And this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. One more little check up top. All right, so there we go. And now that we got the three players, we're just going to maneuver them in a way that just kind of looks good to us. I've got the logo that we're just going to scale up here in the background. I thought it would be pretty cool to incorporate that. So I'm just going to scale that up and then once again, just move our players around here in a way that is just pleasing to the eye. All right, so what I'm doing now is I want to fade away the logo into the background there, nice and seamless. So I'm just using a soft round brush to do this, turning up our flow a little bit. And we're just going to paint on the bottom here on the layer mask black just to fade that into the background, something like that. We can bump up the flow a little bit more. Beautiful. Looking good. All right, so I want to get started on the text now. I'm loading in just a general solid color to use as our background. I'm going to use Prohibition Text. Uh, that's the name of the font that we're going to be using. I'm just going to use white color. We can adjust the colors later. And I'm going to type in Bucks. Of course, they are the Milwaukee Bucks. So that's what we're going to use. Okay, uh, I'm going to scale this up a little bit so it can just fill up our canvas just a little bit more. And we're going to center this as well. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. All right, perfect. Next, I'm going to just create a copy of this so that way we have the text as a backup just in case we need it. And for this one, we're just going to right click this and we're going to convert this to a shape. Um, I essentially want to have two layers, one for the fill and one for the stroke. So that's what I'm doing right now, just titling them appropriately. So I made a copy of that. This one is going to be our stroke. And we're going to get started on the stroke first. So once we've converted both of those layers to a shape, you want to make sure that you are going to be on your custom shape tool. So click on that and we want to turn the fill off go to the stroke and doesn't matter again what color just pick something contrasting to the white we're going to go with gold and i'm going to put this to around 10 pixels for a weight perfect so we'll make sure that those are taken care of and now we want to make sure that we have um, a backup i don't do a lot of work in 3d on photoshop so i just want to make sure i have a backup in case i need to go back and revisit these layers for whatever reason all right now that we got our backups here we want to make sure that we've got the 3d panel in place if you do not have that 3d panel go up to window come down to 3d you can click on that and then you can just load that in right next to your layers or however you want to um, visually have that we want to make sure that we have the extrusion selected and then we're going to start with the fill layer first and then click create and that's going to take us into this 3d viewport tick off the cast shadows and we can play around with the extrusion depth something about i'm going to leave it around 50 pixels i think that's going to be good for what i need it for and now we can go to the stroke, do the same thing, click create, and we're gonna turn off cast shadows and once again, play around with this maximum depth. Um, once you're satisfied with that, we're gonna go to this icon here. And once you click on that, we're gonna do a little bit of adjusting the bevel. So you can change the, the depth of that or the width of that. So that way you can make it as sharp as you want it. And then, um, you know, just go around to playing however you want to move the extrusion this is totally up to you um i'm gonna leave this somewhere right about here 
I think this is going to look good for us for right now. So now that I'm happy with those, I'm going to highlight both of these and make a duplicate copy by pressing Command J. Then we're going to go up to 3D and then click Merge 3D Layers. And for whatever reason, it just loves to shove the text in the top right corner. I don't know why. Just make sure that you're on the move tool and uh, you can click these down and just drag them back into the center where you want it. All right, so from here, uh, what we can do is we can play around with the, this little viewfinder here, rotate it just to see how it looks. And immediately as I do that, I can tell that my extrusion is just a little bit too sunken into the stroke. So we can easily fix that by going back to the fill layer and just coming back down here to the extrusion depth and playing around with that to, you know, however you want it. So somewhere right about here is good. This is closer to the edge and something a little bit more that I wanted to do and I'm happy with this. And now we can just place it however you want it. I went ahead and kind of got into a position that looks something like this. I'm going to place this at the bottom right of the canvas here and I'm going to have um, our smallest player on top of it. So I like this view here and I like this angle. All right, now we can play around with the colors. At the top here, we're going to go to that third icon and this is going to be our materials. And we want to highlight all of these. So just click on either the bottom or top and then hold your shift key and click the top one here. We're going to come down next to the base color on that icon and click remove texture. What happens if you don't do that is when you render it out, you have this funny looking text over everything and it just, it looks off. Um, so now that we have that, we can go into each of these layers here and you can see what I'm doing now is just quickly changing all of these different edges and sides to this 3D object uh, and to the colors that I want. So feel free to do what you want and pick the colors that you wish to do. So I'm just gonna quickly go through that. I just wanna mainly have a green as the text and then on the sides, I just want something a little bit more silver and gray, kind of have a little bit more of a metal look to it. And we're going to add some textures onto that a little bit later. All right, I'm happy with this. We're going to go to that uh, light bulb uh, icon at the top there, come down here to the intensity and just turn this down a little bit somewhere. I think I have it about 31%. Uh, and then we're going to click the render button. If you leave that up, the lighting, it's just a little bit too powerful. So I like to just bring that down just a little bit so that way it comes out the way I want it to. And so this is going to be the result of that. Here's the final render of our bucks. And you can see that it's still really, really bright in that center. So I'm actually going to go back, turn that down, if not all the way, and then just do another quick render. And this is now going to be that final outcome of what that text looks like. All right. So from here, let's just go ahead and bring this down. We can scale this up, rotate it, uh, essentially just kind of get it the text to a, a realistic plane as to how he's going to be standing on top of this. Make sure that it looks like it makes sense. I'm happy with that. We can move these players around just a little bit more. Just kind of fine tune this a little bit before we start getting into all the details. All right. So loading in this next picture here, I've decided to get rid of that logo in the background. I'm going to use this instead and we just want to desaturate that. So you can either use a black and white adjustment layer or a hue and saturation adjustment layer like I did. Desaturate it. And I'm going to put this at the top and just get a nice little spot for this so that way you can kind of see his face as well as the championship uh, trophy in the background as well. And then we're going to fade out the bottom of this just like what we did with the, the texture, or I'm sorry, like we did with the logo originally. And then once you fade it out the areas that you want, we're going to add a solid color adjustment layer over top of this. Uh, find a nice medium to really saturated green to use here. And then you can essentially just cycle through the blend modes as you wish. Um, I'm ultimately going to go with the hard light blend mode here. And then once we've got that, I'm going to come up to the opacity, kick that back a little bit so it's not too powerful. And then we can do some fine tuning of the color as needed. And then we're going to hit OK. All right, so this is a good start. Uh, we're going to keep going with this, add a little bit more. I've got this picture that we're going to load in next. It's a nice little cosmic space dust galaxies image. And we're going to use this. We're going to, first of all, just clip a hue and saturation adjustment layer on top of this, hit colorize, and we want to match basically that same green tone as we have in our background already. And then once we have that, uh, we'll highlight both of these layers, right click, convert it to a smart object. And I'm going to bring one at the bottom here, scale it up. And uh, once we have that, we're going to hit command J and make a copy of that and then bring that up to the top. And then essentially we're just going to fade out a lot of this in the middle. We just want to create a nice little frame for that background image. And then we're going to take it a step further. We're going to start adding a lot of solid color adjustment layers and start building up the colors here. So I'm using a bright green tone, put this into color dark, uh, sorry, color dodge. And then we're just going to start creating a little bit more brightness and saturation uh, to the center here. It's ultimately going to have a bit more of a glowing effect. So this is the start of that. 
And I'm just going to quickly tweak up some of these images here real fast and uh, try to get myself just a little bit better of a layout that I want. Alright, so next what I want to do is I want to add a blur to this background. So I'm just going to go up to filter, go down to blur, and go to Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to leave it right about the two pixels. And then just on that layer mask, I'm going to paint black just on the face there because I want that to be a bit more focused. Everything else can be blurred, but the face, I'll just bring that back in a little bit. And I'm happy with that. Alright, so next order of business is we're going to start focusing on our text. I've got this really cool pixelated pattern that we're going to use to go on top of that as a texture. I'm going to drop a hue and saturation adjustment level on top of this. We're going to put this into colorize and then once again, just try to make everything green here to help match with the rest of our composition here. So play around with these sliders and get it to a point that you're happy with and content with. And once you're okay with that, we're going to drop the opacity, resize this and make sure we have the right perspective that matches our text below and get that to a good point. And once we are satisfied with that, we can bring up the opacity. And what I want to do now is I want to create a selection of just that green part of the text. So that way we can put that on a layer mask of this texture. So we want to go up to select, go down to color range. And then once you're for there, then you can click on that green point and play around with the fuzziness to make sure that everything is included within that selection. Hit OK. And then on that texture, we're going to hit the layer mask button. So that way the texture is confined to that space only. And then from here, we can play around with the blend modes and start really building up this effect here. Um, so I'm going to stick with the hard light and from here I'm going to add a solid color adjustment layer on top of this. Like I said, we're just going to do one layer at a time to really make this pop and uh, sell this effect here. So from here I'm going to just, I think I'm going to end up using a color dodge for this. And then we can tweak, sorry, tweak the colors around ever so slightly here just to get it to that right look that you're going for. We'll add another one on top of this. I've just made a copy, switching the colors up once again. And uh, from here I might play around with the blend mode, switch it up a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to end up going with, let's see here. I'll stick with the linear light. That looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, let's continue on. I'm going to darken up the lower half of our big guy in the back here. Um, and we'll switch the color so it's not just completely black. Um, there is going to be a little bit of color in that shadow. So something about this is good. We'll start to fade him out a little bit. Even on the arms, we'll add a little bit of the, the darkness on there. So that way we can have a little bit more separation between him and then our two uh, Giannis players in the front. All right, so let's continue on here. I'm going to go to focus on just our smaller player for the moment. I'm going to add a levels adjustment on here and I want to create a bit more contrast. So we're going to kind of pull in both the anchors on both ends here and try to match him up with our other two players. From there, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer on top of this and we're going to clip that below. And then I want to go to our blue channel and we're going to pull back a little bit just from the midtones. And so that way the, the hue and tone of his skin just kind of matches a little bit closer to our other players and then go back to the levels and play around with this a little bit. But because we did add that levels adjustment layer, now the whites are too much. So I'm just toning this back a little bit by painting black on that layer mask. And uh, he's looking good. So from here, we're going to take all three of these layers and we're going to right click and convert it to a smart object. And this is going to be our base layer. Uh, from here, we're going to go to filter and then camera raw filter to do a little bit of adjustments. I'll start with the basics tab here, maybe increase the contrast a little bit more, add a little bit of vibrance, not too much though. And then with all my sport edits, I like to add a bit of sharpening. Um, we can play around with this hue color mixer, maybe make them a little bit more red to match our medium uh, player because I kind of like to use him as the base. And then I went ahead and added all three and did the same thing with the camera raw filters just to try to make it a little bit more cohesive. But before we continue on with adding more edits to our players, I'm just going to touch up the background a little bit more. I'm going to add a solid color adjustment layer and start to add a little bit more glow back here. So once again, it's just picking a green color, playing around with the blend modes, trying to find something a little bit brighter. And then we're just going to fill that in and paint white on that layer mask. So mainly just the center point is where I want to have this glowing effect. So I'm just building this up a little bit. And this is coming along. It's, it's actually starting to look pretty decent here. I want to add a layer on top of the back player here. Just a second. Play around with these blend modes. And essentially I want to just add a little bit better of a transition um, with our player. Here. Introduce a little bit more lights. Add some color on the arms there as well to help with that fading into the, uh, the darkness at the bottom of this canvas. So we're going to pause on the players for just a second, go back to our text here, 
And what I've got is this metal texture that we're gonna add to this text, uh, mainly the sides of this. So first things first, I just wanna create the right perspective. And this is gonna start, uh, we're gonna start adding this onto all of the, basically the left sides of the letters. And um, now that I've got that kind of taken care of, we'll hit that check mark and we're gonna scale this down a little bit. So I'm gonna bring this all the way down to the bottom left. We're gonna start with the B. And all we're gonna do is once we get this into place, all right, so something right about here. Let's scale this down maybe just a little bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip this onto the text itself and then hold the Alt or Option key on our previous layer mask of that green portion, drag that on here, invert it by pressing Command I. So that way, now it's completely on the edges and not on the sides. And we're gonna play around with the blend modes here. Um, I'm gonna go with something, uh, let's see here. Maybe the between these multiply color burns, um, linear burn actually looks good. So let's stick with this. I'm happy with that. And now that I got that, I'm essentially going to do the same thing, repeat that same process over with the rest of the letters. But I'm just going to skip over that. And here is the result of that, just to save us a little bit of time. And I'm happy with this. So we got the first one down. I'm going to add another texture on top, a different metal texture. So let's go ahead and bring that up here. It's got a little bit more scratches to it, but we're going to repeat the same process. And I'm going to do the same thing. I actually grouped everything together with the layer mask on there so I don't have to keep clipping everything onto each other. Um, so we're just going to go through here, apply that texture on here. Try not to be too overbearing, but here's the before and after. A nice little difference, but it's a little something to add on there. Uh, and for this next section, as you can see, I'm just going to speed through it again, just to save us a little bit of time. But I want to introduce a little bit more color. Uh, so I'm going to experiment with the human saturation adjustment layers, uh, maybe play around with some solid color adjustment layers with different blend modes. But essentially, I just want to tweak this text up a little bit, add a little bit more green just to fit with this composition. So I'll be back with you in just a second once I finish with this little section here. So unfortunately, um, I had some issues with my file and I lost basically all of that that I just was able to at least capture on video so you can see that process. Um, I'll continue on with the video here and then add that in just a little bit later, bring those textures back in, but you at least get the idea of how I started painting that on there. So I'm going to continue on here with our medium Giannis and just start introducing a little bit more shadows and transitioning him into the bottom like we did with our big guy. So we're just painting this on here using a solid color adjustment layer. Um, and then once we get this taken care of, we're going to start playing around with the skin tones here. So I'm going to first start off with using a solid color adjustment layer to do this. We're going to start working with our the largest guy in the back first. And what I went ahead and did was just add this into um, we're going to do a soft light color adjustment here lower the opacity but essentially i want to start matching the skin tones of all of our guys i like the medium size uh Giannis the best in terms of skin tone so i'm going to start trying to match that so when i do things like this i use a lot of different solid color adjustment layers place them one on top of each other just start stacking them and then do my best to kind of eyeball this and start matching this and, and warming and starting to bring a little bit more like for in this case a little bit more reds into his uh skin tone here so once more, adding a different solid color adjustment, again, clipping that on top, using soft light. I like to use soft light when I do with a lot of skin tones here. Uh, so that's not too, uh, too contrast, especially with like the, the muscles and things like that. It, it just, it transitions nicely. So if once the lighter colors, obviously I'm going to start focusing on the highlights. I'm using the, the light map of our guy himself. So anywhere that there's brighter points, that's pretty much the area I'm targeting when I'm choosing my lighter colors and vice versa. When we start doing the shadows, I'll start playing around with some different colors and then really just focused on those darker areas. So right now, basically anything I'm doing to our tall Giannis, I'm going to do the same thing with our smaller one at the very bottom here. So we're just going back and forth as we do this and just going over and over, repeating the process. I'm speeding through this uh, since we're just, again, it's very repetitive but you at least still get the general idea of what I'm doing. 
All right, so for the most part, I think the mid-tones highlights look pretty good. Let's start working on our shadows. And usually when I'd work on the darker points, I tend to work in the multiply blend mode for this. Um, so we'll just kind of stick, and I always like to see, just to double check if I like something better, but we'll stick with multiply and change the color up just a little bit here. Something right here, we'll hit okay. Invert that mask, and like I said, I'm just gonna go over the parts that are already dark on this body, uh, you know, just use what you got and just try to amplify it. May exaggerate some of these features here. And it's easier to do more up front and then skill back later. Um, so that's kind of the approach I have. So we'll take a zoom back here in just a second here after I just finish this little section here. All right, so clearly I added a little bit too much on that left side. So let's just take care of that. Uh, pretty easy fix. Um, we'll just paint black on that layer mask and that will just kind of diffuse it just a little bit so it's not too overbearing. All right, but that's a good before and after. Uh, we're starting to really kind of exaggerate the muscles. Um, I like this look. Again, this is all about personal preference. Maybe you don't like that, but uh, I tend to do this with my sports edits. All right, so now it's all about just finishing this up with the remaining of our players here. I'll take a few more minutes to do that, and then we'll move on to that adding that green lights that interacts with our background. So be back with you in just a second here. So here we are with all those adjustments. All of our players are looking really good. Let's start adding that green light. We're going back yet again to just a green solid color adjustment layer and we're going to clip it to our big guy in the back first. I like to put these in an overlay whenever or basically whenever I do any sort of highlighting work. Uh, we'll invert that mask by pressing command I and then now we're just going to go uh, first of all lower our flow here just really lightly start brushing this light back on starting with the arms here. It's really easy to go overboard with this so just again less is more and um, just really trying to paint on this light that would have the most interaction with the light in the background. I'm adding an even brighter tone uh, just different light intensities you want to have that variation once again going back to the overlay blend mode and repeating those same steps. Uh, as I mentioned before I try to just kind of follow that light map that's already here with our players already going over some of these highlights you can see on the uh, the muscles there to help exaggerate that but that's just my general rule of, of doing these compositions and adding the light on here um, and this is actually looking pretty good I'm, I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far and I'll just touch up a little bit more on the neck maybe a little bit on the face And there's the before and after. Yeah, guys, this rim light is looking great. Uh, we can touch up and tweak some areas just a little bit, but for the most part, I'm pretty happy. I'm not getting too detailed into this just for the sake of the video. And, uh, but I still want to do a pretty good job. So what I'm going to do now is just take a second to do the rest of our players, but it's going to be repeating the same thing. So let me skip over that real quick and I will show you that end result. All right, so here we are. As you can see, started adding the lights even on our medium guy. We even got some interaction on the on the shorts, the basketball, the fingers. Um, like I said before, not spending a great deal of time on this. Um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So lastly here, we'll just kind of wrap things up with the shadow underneath the, uh, the foot here, just so that way we have some interaction uh, with him on top of this logo. And if you can see now, I even went back and added some time on that logo. So... Have a little bit of that green incorporated in that um and that was looking the way i pretty much left off before i had those computer issues all right so i think that's gonna do it uh with everything so here's that final composition with this um what i'm gonna do now for the most part this 
project is done, this image is done, I'm gonna probably take just like another hour, maybe just fine, uh, fine detail adding on to that. Um, but like I said, if this were to be for an actual paid uh, project, I spent a lot more time with the details, but I still like to do a good job, so I still want to add a little bit of extra time onto this, but not, you know, overkill with this video and make this video go into a pretty long deal of length. So, I'm going to skip over that, and here is the final composition of those final edits. And as you can see here, I even adjusted the, the logo at the bottom, kind of spread that out across the bottom of that canvas. I thought that that bottom left side was just a little bit too bare, so I wanted to stretch that out and cover some areas. I even wanted just to add a little bit more text to this, so I just included the Milwaukee uh, on top of the Bucks, essentially just using the same font. I took out the fill, so it's just the stroke, and uh, converted that to a smart object, and that way I can also just kind of manipulate that to the perspective I want. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how this turned out. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you enjoyed the sports edits. If you like that, I do have a few more other sport edits that you can check out as well if you'd like to do a little bit more of that. Uh, but all in all, thanks for joining me today, watching this video. If you liked it, please uh, click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not doing so already. Really appreciate all the support I can get. But for the meantime, guys, I hope to have you back again relatively soon here with another video at Blend Graphics. So with that said, please take care and have a good one, y'all.